<laughs> that call out though, you must have heard that. I turned the game sound up for you so you could hear what the guy said after all those explosions. Hardline really does make you smile sometimes. So, the beta is finally here, and uh, I've spent most of my time messing around in the new Hotwire game mode. And for me, it's by far the most fun. But I have to say, my standout moment so far is flipping the bird at the policeman. That was absolutely brilliant. It completely caught me by surprise. And whoever put that in there is a freaking genius. They need to be commended on such a high level for adding that into the game. It's just... You don't expect it to be in a Battlefield title, but it kind of makes sense when you're a criminal. You don't want to get caught, so you just flip the bird at them. It was absolutely brilliant. It's something like a 1 in 20 chance of activating that animation, you know. If you didn't know what it is, it's a spotting animation. So if you hit the spot button, like your life depending on it, you will at some point in the future be able to activate that animation. And I think because it's 1 in 20, it's not as uncommon as some of the other cool animations in the game. But uh, it's really something that... Once you get to see it, it's such a cool animation, but at the same time, what you're doing is helping your team by slamming the spot button. And for those of those people that are saying that Hardline doesn't have a lot of teamwork, well, there's a good reason to start using the spot button. And while we're on the subject of animations, actually, you can activate some really rare reloads in this game. And it's for primary weapons at the moment, I think, only. I I'm not 100% certain if that's confirmed or not, but the odds of getting this is like 1 in 10,000, so it's really, really rare that you're going to see one of these reloads. But to sort of give you a little bit of a taster, I know how the RPG one works. So if you're reloading the RPG, the guy tries to put the explosive in the wrong end of the RPG and then realises mistake, throws the projectile in the air and catches it in the firing mechanism. It, it sounds pretty cool and I, I would really love to see that in game but Visceral have been given a little bit of licence. Each weapon class, so like assault rifles, carbines, SMGs, all have one unique reload animation. Doesn't matter which weapon you're using, all the animations will fit onto any of the weapons. So you might have the M416, you might get the cool reload there. You might have the Uzi from the SMGs, you might get a cool reload there. But as I said, it's 1 in 10,000, so the likelihood of you getting this is extremely low. But I've seen one on YouTube already and it does look pretty cool. Alongside seeing some of those epic animations, sniping is something I've been really enjoying as well. It just feels so satisfying in this game, much more so than it currently is in Battlefield 4. And even now, after the full patch, that is quite good. Uh, but you know what? It, it feels like it's on par with Battlefield 3. And that was a great sniping game for me. No clunky scope issues, just you, trigger, and the enemy's head. I think the reason why this feels so similar to Battlefield 3 is Visceral did work on a DLC for Battlefield 3 Endgame. They made that DLC, and Hardline was starting to be developed halfway through the life cycle of Battlefield 3. So a lot of the ideology from that game is actually in Hardline as opposed to what you might think, which is it's based off Battlefield 4, and that's completely not true. Yes, it's built on the same engine, but the ideology behind it from the developers is very much focused on Battlefield 3. The bullet drop is real though. <laughs> you might have noticed that Hardline's maps are quite a bit smaller than the standard battlefields that you're used to. For example, sniping from the A flag to the C flag on Dust Bowl Conquest, which is pretty much right the way across the map is only around 250 meters max and to make up for that reduced range the rifles have a lot more bullet drop but that still gives you the authentic sniping experience that you're used to if imagine instead of it being 600 meters across and you having to aim above the head that amount of, of sort of space you're having to do that for like 250 meters so yeah it's a reduced range but you're still getting that bullet drop and that experience that you always come to expect from a Battlefield title. I've been reading a lot of tweets and messages of people saying that they think the sniping is too powerful and then other people saying they think it's too weak, but I think it's somewhere in the middle. The rifles on offer do differ quite a lot, like the 300 knockout has a built-in silencer, the AWM is the L96 from Battlefield 4 and is really good at long range, and the Scout Elite has a really fast fire rate, which is always good in close quarters. And the R700 does feel like quite a heavy duty rifle, but feels like it can do a lot of damage as well. They all have their strengths and their weaknesses. The Scout Elite does well on bank job because it is that close quarters infantry style play right there. And you need that rapid fire rate. The AWM is good on Dust Bowl Conquest, as I said before, because of the longer lines of sight across the map. 
each sniper has its own place in this game and they're really balanced quite well in my opinion. It might mean that you've only just unlocked like the first or second snipers have the ability to buy them and you might not just be using them in the right situations. I've unlocked all of them now and I think each one has its own place. Gotta say AWM is my favourite, I don't like the 300 knockout very much but I'll probably grow accustomed to it if I can find the right scenario to use it in. SMGs are the same actually, they feel really well balanced, they dominate at close range, they absolutely rip you to shreds, which is great because that's what they're designed to do. For too long assault rifles have been the most powerful weapon in the Battlefield series and I really like the visceral went out of their way to make sure that the SMGs are better in certain situations. It's worth noting at this point that a lot of people have said that they think they're dying too quickly or they think they're getting one hit killed. Well, if you're getting killed by any of the SMGs, they do have extremely fast fire rates like the K10, the Vector, is 1200 rounds a minute. That's ridiculous. The magazine empties in less than a second. It's insane. So if you think you're dying too quickly, Look at most of the guns in the game, they do have a fairly high fire rate. The time to kill is very low in Hardline, I'll admit that. Something that you're going to probably have to get used to. A lot of people saying it's the net code, but I honestly think it's just that the time to kill is lower, and on average the rate of fire for the weapons available in the game is just that much higher. Recoil as well is higher than Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3 for that matter. Think in between Medal of Honor Warfighter if you played that game and Battlefield 3 and that's about where Hardline sits. Requires skill to take somebody out a long range with an assault rifle or an SMG where they're not too sort of appropriate and I think that's how it really should be. Close quarter style of gameplay means that the learning curve isn't too hard, you're not going to notice that recoil at really close range which kind of makes up for the fact it's been increased overall. And one final thing, I did mention the dreaded netcode. I don't wish to start a war here, and I'm only going to mention it very briefly, but from my experience playing Hardline so far, all the way from May 2014 when I played the first like alpha test that I played in San Francisco, all the way to the beta right now, I've seen the netcode go from bloody awful last year all the way to something I'm really impressed with right now. It feels pretty damn tight. The beta is a testing environment, so of course lots of different things can change, but personally I feel the netcode and hit registration is as good as it's probably going to get right now. I mean we can all have sort of things where you get shot around the corner, that's going to happen from time to time. It's just something I've got used to with the Frostbite engine. If I see hit markers when I'm firing at somebody and my reticle is on the player, that's enough for me to know that my bullets are going where they're supposed to be going. And that's me done, I've run out of things to say. I've had a really good time on my first day in the Battlefield Hardline beta, but I want you to tell me what your experience has been in the comments below. I really do want to find out what platform you're playing on and whether you're having a good experience so far. Whether you like the game, whether your impression has been changed. Just let me know down in the comments. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you did, if you could leave me a like rating, that would be absolutely fantastic. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.